Well, my name's Carl Morris. I was born in uh, Saldovia, Alaska, on the tip of the Kenai Peninsula, small fishing village. My mother uh, was born and raised in that area uh, as a, a lutic, and uh, growing up in a small town like that, uh, things like ANXA are big, big issues. I actually uh, moved to Kodiak uh, in 62, went to school in Kodiak till uh, 68, and uh, went back to, uh, went into the Marine Corps, and then back to Soldovia, uh, started fishing again. And then uh, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was sort of working its way through Congress at the time. And we had a lot of interest in Soldovia, but nobody understood it. Um, so I'd spent a lot of time with what is now Soldovia Village uh, Native Corporation, working on land issues um, with those that thought they would be in power when and if ANCSA passed. And of course, everybody back then thought when ANCSA passed, they'd all be rich and never have to work again. And because uh, th there was a lot of expectations on behalf of uh, Alaska Natives at the time. Um, and uh, for me, it was uh, a new challenge. I mean, I didn't want to be a commercial fisherman all the rest of my life. So after the act had passed, um, it was late 1972, there was a uh, job opening at Cook Inlet Region, uh, Siri at the time, as a land trainee under a guy by the name of Larry Skolkoff out of, uh, out of Nanilchik. Uh, had a lot to do with the beginnings of ANCSA. So I came up and went to Anchorage and filed for the job, not thinking I'd get it. Um, but I did, and come to find out it was really a drafting position. But Siri didn't have the money to pay for a draftsman, so they called it a land trainee so they could pay less. And uh, that was sort of the starting of the experience, um, which ran for some 32 years at Siri. But uh, um, it was uh, a challenge for everybody because nobody really understood it, and nobody understood the land issues. So. Uh, it was a learning curve, and back then, a pretty fast learning curve to try to catch up with really what our rights were. I worked with them on that <clears throat> issue of getting people signed up. Uh, it was mainly done by a couple of people in Soldovia, but I, I helped them. There wasn't any staff of any kind back in those days. I mean, there was people that were volunteering to try to figure out what was going on and get as many Alaska Natives signed up as possible. And it was very interesting back then because a lot of the older people wouldn't admit they were Alaska Native uh, because it was taboo when they were growing up to be Alaska Native. In fact, there are a couple of people that never did get signed up because of one reason or another. Their husband wouldn't allow them to admit they were Natives, and most of those were women. But uh, uh, So we lost out on some members, and I think that was probably prevalent throughout areas that had been, um, whether it was southeast or Alaska or Kodiak, where there were large fishing villages that had outside influences, uh, heavy outside influence, uh, non-native influence. I'm, I'm sure a lot of Alaska Natives didn't get signed up for that reason. Um, but. In, in forming the Village Corporation, I, I think, again, that that was one of those reasons for high expectations. Uh, people figured if they signed up for it, they were going to get lots of money because people were talking about m millions and billions of dollars that the federal government was going to put up at the time. Uh, and I suppose we sort of fed into that to get people to sign up uh, at the time. Uh, but uh, so we ended up with, uh, I believe, 254 shareholders total, which, uh, you know, I, I thinking back, it, it probably was about the right number uh, for that village. Uh, 
Soldovia at the time was probably um, after the earthquake was dwindling because the canneries had all moved. But in the early days, it was eight population, about seven, eight hundred. And uh, so a, a native population, mainly out of the Port Graham English Bay, Port Chatham area, was where most of those came from.